Good morning to you. Good morning to you. Well, it's about 1.30 and I'm getting ready to go to my office. There's a little pee pee. Um, and I have read my meditations. Don't I look so pretty? I have read my meditations. You guys are just going to bear with me while I get ready. I have read my meditations and um, let's see what else. Can you see me over there? Had a cup of coffee, uploaded a booktube video, started my vlog, got my vlog together so it'll be up early. So if you caught yesterday's I should have had it up one time. Because I have not been doing such a great job of that lately. So, what you missed was me putting on my jean shorts. I'm sure none of you care. So, anyway, already brushed my teeth, deodorant. Chanel Ego East Platinum. Wash my face real quick. Ugh. If you watch yesterday's vlog, I fell asleep like super early. I'm flat to like 6.50 in the morning. 6.53 to be exact. And, um, okay, what else here? Nothing else. Covering myself up. And then I, um, I don't know if I want to wear this shirt. Yeah, I woke up at like 6.50 in the morning which hat do I want to wear today? And then I went and I got my car washed. Sometimes I like brush my hair or like comb my hair through before I put this hat on the front because it looks a little bit cuter. I know you guys can't see it and right now you're just... Oh. When I wash my face, I always put the Aveeno lotion on it afterwards because it just looks like... This is like where I'm in a hurry. Which is like the majority of my life. But anyway, and then I came home and I went back to bed and I did some bills and stuff and then I went back to bed. Oh, and finished off that ice cream from last night. So healthy. And I slept to like 11.30. And then I slept to like, how's that? And then I slept to like 11.30, and then I, um, <gasps> bye, PB. Hey, loves you. And then, um, got up and did my meditation. So, like, every morning, I'll show you, I'm making a cup of coffee, and I'm reading these daily meditations before I even pick up my phone. And I have been so good about it. Oh, stupid light. Here, I'll show you. So where'd I put my coffee? So here's my coffee that I made. I have a massive headache because it's raining outside. If you watch my vlogs, you know I get migraines associated with barometric pressure. I need some Aleve. But these are the books I read. Pos the Daily Book of Positive Quotes by Linda Pacone. I this is my favorite. And then Sark, Living Juicy. This is who I was talking about the other day. That she does. Like, hers are so colorful. See? Anyway, I love this one. 
Um, but this is, like, her books are mostly for women, but this, the meditation book isn't. And then I recently bought this Alexandra Stoddard book, Grace Notes. I do not love it, I will tell you. But I did love this that she said, I'm out of breath. The world needs all of us to participate positively and productively in trying to make a better life for everyone. Think of large issues, avoid petty, useless stuff. I love that. But I don't love this one. I don't know why, I just don't. And then, of course, Melody Beatty's Journey to the Heart is absolutely incredible. And, um... I actually need to go and pick up some books today because I want to reread. Oh, maybe I have it over here. I want to reread Codependent No More. If you guys haven't read that, it's a fantastic book to read for anybody in a relationship um, or, you know, past relationships, any issues so that you can focus on yourself. And it's about self-love. And then um, I think Alex and I are going to read the five love languages again. So because we've read it before, and he did a much better job reading it. I slacked. So I'm going to get those books today. Um, I know everybody always wants to know how we're doing. We're doing great. We had a great date night last night. Um, we've been texting back and forth today. Things are going really good between us. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm not a believer that, you know, everything's fixed in one marriage counseling session, but things are going good. I'm hopeful. So, Oh my God, the skies are like so dark back there. All right, well, I'm going to get off here so I can try to get to my office and meet with this person before um, it, I get poured on. I love you guys. So I just left my office because it's been like pouring down rain and I wanted to get to my car. And this dude right here, let me show you him. Right here, this one. About took me fucking out as I was walking. Yeah, you. Slow the fuck down. I'm like in flip flops and I fell because he comes tearing through the parking lot. Don't fuck with a YouTuber. What is with people? Seriously. This guy just came right out into the intersection. I like slipped. I'm in flip flops. I like slipped all across going, um, to the parking lot. I'm not even like in the middle of like the area where you drive. I'm like to the side. I think everybody should have YouTube channels and when somebody's rude, you should just throw up on YouTube what they did and then maybe they'll rethink their gig. But anyway, like, so he comes, I can hear him behind me. You know, people are usually really considerate of pedestrian, pedestrians. I am. He comes behind me, I can hear him. And so I like move over and he like literally is like coming at me. And so like I moved real quick and slipped and fell in flip flops. Cause it was like literally torrential downpours about five minutes ago. How rude is that? Especially when it's raining. Like, if it was dry out, like, I can understand somebody being in a hurry or something like that. That makes me so mad. Anyway. Not gonna ruin my peaceful day. Even though my legs from my knees down are completely soaked. And my butt of my jeans is soaked. But whatever. I can change my jeans. I don't have to let it ruin my day. Under, like, I, I'm not somebody that drives super slow, but I'm not somebody that drives super fast either. Like, I don't understand people that are always in a race to get somewhere. I'm like, especially when it's like a parking space, you know, and it's like, I did this rant video yesterday, which I really meant to be a joke. Like, everybody took it super, super seriously, I think, but like, it was really kind of a joke. Like, I don't really get that upset about things. I mean, honest to God, like, this guy just tore into me, and I like fell, and he didn't even stop and say like, are you okay? Or, hey, I'm sorry that I was coming so fast, I didn't see you, nothing. No, like, what has happened to society? We wonder about all of this, like, political stuff that goes on in the world and everybody taking to Facebook and ruining friendships over this and that. And it's like, we've forgotten how to treat people, you know? We've forgotten how to, to be kinder. Let somebody in. Like, are you in that much of a hurry? You know, make sure the person crosses the road okay. <laughs> what is the, wrong with this world? Everybody's in a hurry to get where, my God. 
I really don't understand it. Like, I just don't. But if you see my rant videos on my main channel, I'm telling you, like, 95% of the time, they're all a joke. So anyway, I was reading in my office The Mistletoe Secret <laughs> Christmas book by Richard Paul Evans. It's actually very good. That's where I'm at in it. Um, so what else do I have in here to show you? Nothing exciting. I wish, but I don't. Oh, I do have this. So these friends of mine stopped by and they brought me these candies that are called Maramel. They're from Mexico because they're buying a house in Mexico and they're moving down there. And they were like honey with sesame seeds in them. Do you guys remember those candies? Like, I don't remember, where, I don't know where to buy those candies, but like, oh my God. So I ate through this whole thing. I saved this because I wanted to show Alex. But I ate through this whole thing like that quick. It was so good. No, they weren't $25, they like 25 pesos. And there were 10 pieces in them and I ate them like they were nobody's business, so. Anyway, not today. I've had those in my bag for a while. Did I already show those on my vlog? Ugh. My legs are literally soaking wet and they're all black on the back. I didn't see that. Well, now I'm gonna have to take a shower. <laughs> Oh my lord. With Tommy Sushi, all you can eat, and it doesn't look open. It says open, but it doesn't look like there's anything in there. With Tommy Sushi, all you can eat. Ice cold Coca Cola sold here. Why am I hungry for Chinese buffet again? I don't know. Peter, you're so crazy. Oh my gosh. I gotta figure out what I wanna do for dinner, and then I want to, because Alex is going out for drinks with his friend Grasha tonight. And no, I don't wanna go. <laughs> so that's not one of those things, like, Peter, why don't you ever go? It's like a, I love Grasha, I, I love her to death, and she's a good friend of ours. And um, what's interesting is that my ex knew her too, because they both worked at the same salon. And then she came and she worked at the salon that Alex works at, and now she works on her own. So, um, so I've known her actually longer than Alex did, but um, or has, but um, they're really good friends. So I'm just gonna let them go do their thing tonight. I like wanna do my own thing. I don't work tomorrow. I'm actually off until Monday. I have no meetings with any potential clients. I have no leadership conferences that I'm doing this weekend. When I talk about leadership conferences, I want you guys to understand, because a lot of people are like, I don't really understand what you do. So what I do is, like, if you own a business, I go in and I do, like, team building exercises. So, like, maybe on a Saturday, you, like, rent out a place or, like, a picnic place or whatever, and, like, all the team goes there. And then, like, we do team building and all that kind of stuff. I lead it. And I love it, because I used to do it back in the day. Like, I would participate in those. And they're so much fun. And on a bigger level, it's like ropes courses and things like that. But it's really about bringing um, like corporate and executive teams together. And um, it's really interesting. Like one of the things that I'm really big into is conflict resolution. And um, like if you have two employees that don't get along at all, then working with them um, to get along because a lot of times if they don't get along then what happens is it affects the morale of the whole entire team because everybody else is talking to one side or the other side and then the supervisor doesn't really want to know what to do because they're trying to stay out of it and so it really does affect the overall quality of the work being produced and when you look at it that way then you really see how problematic they are to the work environment right well when you take those two people off and you put them aside and with everybody else and then you look at, you don't call everybody out and say, well, what did you say about Susie and what did you say about Judy? You have them together as a team 
and then you realize, let them realize like really that they're mirroring each other's behaviors in a lot of ways or they're jealous of each other and what's that about and how can they learn from each other and how can they build to each other. I've literally had people contact me like a year and a, late, a year later and say, not only do we get along at work, but we are now best friends on a day goes by that we don't talk. I mean, how crazy is that? I didn't do that. Like they did that, you know, like they did the work, but like that is so crazy, right? And some of my favorite books for that kind of stuff are like a Fish. I love the book Fish. And I love the, for businesses. So if you're like own a business out there, even if you own a business where you only have three or five employees, like this is phenomenal for that. Um, Fish, which is about like, well, I don't want to tell you if you haven't read it. It's very short, very short business books. And then I also love Who Moved My Cheese, which is about blaming people in like work environments. Um, and really like, you know, I'm not a big believer in like rising to the top. I mean, I, I think that everybody has their place in a work environment, you know, and maybe your place isn't to be the supervisor. My place was never to be the supervisor. You know, I don't share this on here a lot, but I was a team leader where I worked and I just didn't do very well in that role. You know, like I'm more, I, I work better in teams as part of a team, not leading the team. And I actually got demoted from that position with a pay demotion and everything. And my supervisor was like, we're going to put you back in a clinical role because that's where you're so good. And I was like, okay. And, you know, I had talked to my sponsor and I had talked to my friends about it and uh, my boyfriend at the time. And um, the HR director was like, are you not going to quit? <laughs> I think they were kind of like wanting me to quit or something. I don't know. It's so funny because in retrospect, so many good things happened after that. But, I mean, at that organization. But I was like, no. And I said, why were you worried about that? And she said, yeah, honestly, we were because you're so valuable to us as a clinician, but we didn't want to lose you. And most people, if they're demoted, just quit, you know? And I said, no, I said, I think what you're saying is true. Like, I know where my assets are and they're not as a team leader on this unit, you know? And um, I'm really like, that's one situation in my life that I'm very proud of handling. I'm probably not so proud of throwing that dude up on camera and saying, here's the MF or that, but whatever, he deserved it. I fell because of him and he didn't even say I'm sorry. Can't you just say I'm sorry to people? Like, I would have been totally over it. If he would have looked at me and be like, hey, dude, I'm totally sorry. I would have been like, oh, no problem. Cool, totally. But he didn't. So, but anyway, you know, like, that's, it's moments like that that I'm very proud of. And, um, and, you know, then after that, I was back running a caseload and I loved it. You know, that's what I really loved doing there anyway. And what I didn't realize was I was very stressed trying to do a job I wasn't any good at and I didn't enjoy, you know, coming in there and doing all of this, not the stuff that I do today, but like leading a team, you know, and being accountable for that team and holding them accountable. I don't like, I like being accountable for myself. You know, I don't like holding 10 people accountable. Um, and so, you know what, like I went back into the role that I had been in before and I prospered, you know, because that's where I was good. And I think that you have to know what you're good at. Um, in anything in life, you know, and what you're not. It's like, I know so many hairstylists because of just having two boyfriends and well, a husband and a boyfriend that have worked in hair salons. One is a hairstylist and one is a, a vent planner. And, um, you know, it's interesting because I meet so many hairstylists that don't want to necessarily work at the same salon forever, but then they'll say like, and I'll say, well, do you want to own your own salon? And they're like, no, I want no part of that. Like, I know I'm not good. I wouldn't be a good owner. Like I want to be a stylist, but I'm not a good owner. Like I, I wouldn't be good at that. And I think that's interesting. You know, I think that's really like knowing what you're very, very good at and what you're not. And, um, so, you know, for me, that's worked really successfully in life because um, I think I'm pretty honest with myself when it comes to this isn't your thing, you know? Like, I have to say on my main channel, I really struggled because a lot of people really like me doing the drama and like being funny, haha, -ha, but I'm not good at the drama, you know? Like, I'm not. Like, I'm not up to date on it. I don't know it. Usually, if I find out something about it, it's because somebody else told me about it, but like, I don't know the drama. And I really could care less about the makeup beauty drama, honestly, or any of it. You know, like, mostly what I watch on YouTube, like, is you know, murder mystery stories or shark attacks and stuff like that. And those megalathon shark. I mean, I look at that kind of stuff or like alien footage from NASA. You know, I, I don't get into all of that video that people think I do, but like, I don't like, I really don't like, they think I just sit and like eat up 15, like drama videos a day. I could care less, you know? So as you'll see by the video that I'm posting today, another rant video about Starbucks Frappuccino if I end up posting it. So anyway, 
I'll talk to you guys in a little bit. In the middle of the night. What's up, yo? <laughs> My nephew said that to me the other day. What's up, yo? And now I've been saying yo all the time. I don't like this angle. There. How are you guys? I found Dr. Pepper. Let's just have a little conversation, shall we? What would you guys like to talk about tonight? Well, what did I do tonight? I live streamed. And I threw up my videos. And then I went and picked up Tanya and we went to Meyer and she did some shopping. And I bought some treats for myself. I bought candle. I'm a candle review company. I bought those candle scented wax cubes. I got this one. It's called Clarity. Sage leaf and clove. $1.99. And then I got Blackberry Merlot. Okay. I'll tell you about the Merlot in a second. Mm, that's really nice. And then I got Bourbon. Isn't it funny that I got like two alcohol ones that I don't drink? But this one doesn't actually smell like alcohol. It smells kind of like a mixture between like patchouli and cedar. And I like woodsy scents like that. And then I got, these were all Oud Noir. These are, and this is another woodsy scent. And these were all, these four were $1.99. And then I got this Burt's Bees one that is a fresh cut burn. Oh my God. And it's different. Do you see the back of it? This one I'm going to be burning tomorrow. And I am so excited about it. It is so strong. It smells like pine, okay? It doesn't, I don't know. It's supposed to smell like fern or whatever, but it smells so good. I love ferns. I love in the summer, we always have big ferns hanging from our patio. And it always reminds me of Florida. So that was my little treat to myself tonight. It's funny, like, when I see, like, favorites um, on some people's channels. I used to do favorites on my channel. I did, like, two favorites videos. But it's interesting when I do, like, I see, like, favorites videos or, like, all those kinds of things. And they're always these, like, very expensive items that I'm like, do you think, like, the average viewer could afford that? Like, seriously? Like, hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars? Like, it's interesting to me, right? And, um, I was watching this favorites video from this girl that's, like, I don't know, like, 21, 22. And I was like... Do you really think that any of your viewers can afford these things? And I was really surprised by some of the comments because the people were like, oh, I'm going to really save my money to get this. And I thought, okay, like a $300 makeup item, like that is expensive. And I'm not a woman, so I don't wear makeup, but I know that $300 for one makeup item is pretty expensive, don't you think? Like I do. <laughs> I would rather spend the $11 I spent at Meyer on candle scents that will last me a month, quite frankly. But I'm kind of simple like that, you know, like I don't need a lot. Like, you know, it's like I don't even want to spend a lot of money on my curd cups for coffee, but like I like to have good ones. I get the McDonald's ones now, the McCafe, I think they're called. Um, but I love those. And then I always have to have like, you know, coffee at home. I showed this before. I'm not a lover of Starbucks coffee. It's really funny because I go through Starbucks every day, but I don't love Starbucks. Like my favorite coffee is gas station coffee. Like seriously. And not Speedway is not it. And not Thornton's. I 
BP, I think, is my favorite um, gas station coffee. But, like, really, I like when you go to just, like, some truck stop and they've made, like, uh, you know, like, a pot of coffee. And it's just, like, you know what I'm talking about? Like, it's not, like, any kind of special blend. I love that. I'm just old school Folgers. Like, I don't, like, need any kind of fancy coffee or anything like that. And, um, yeah. So, and the majority of the time that you guys are seeing me drink that Boss Water, it's bottles of water that I've refilled with tap, tap water, and put in the refrigerator. That's majority of the time what it is. It's not Boss Water. The only thing I cannot drink is well water. I, I don't know why, but, like, I just don't like it. When I was a little kid, and I would stay... Oh, did you hear that? I can never do that when I want to do it. Um, when I was staying with my aunt and uncle who owned a farm in Fort Wayne, they had well water, and I can remember I, like, couldn't drink it. It, like, nauseated me. Um, and it just, I think, was, like, the irony kind of taste to it, you know? Not the irony of it, but, like, the, the taste of iron in it, like, really... I just didn't like it. It made me uncomfortable. Or sulfur. Or what's the what's the taste in well water? You know, like that rusty taste. I don't like that. But anyway, so yeah, so that's what I did tonight with Tanya, and then we drove around for a little bit and talked, and then um, I went home, and then Alex had just gotten home from going out with his girlfriend, so we laid in bed and talked with the dogs and played with the dogs and stuff like that, and. Um, then he was going to bed. I was watching these videos of like, it was really funny because I was watching these videos of, um, I've been watching like such random videos on YouTube lately. I was watching videos of like people going crazy like in certain places, like this woman in this fish store that was returning this fish that had died because the guy had bad water. That video was really funny. And then I was watching this video, what was the other video? Somebody getting really upset. Oh, this woman in a skate park because these kids were using profanity. Have you seen these kinds of videos on YouTube? They crack me up. I was watching those, but then there was this one and it was like, woman goes nuts in um, a Barnes and Noble. So I started watching it and like right away, I was like, oh, this is so stupid. This is staged. And it was like this woman and she had like this long like braid and um, she was like asking if they had any books by the author of Misery, Paul Sheldon. And I like instantly knew she was supposed to be Kathy Bates from Misery. And I was like, whatever. But she like legit, and it was called Lady Goes Crazy in a Barnes and Noble or something like that. But she legit, um, and here I am worried that this was a police officer next to me. And it's this guy in a car on his phone, holding his phone down like this, reading it and weaving across the road. But anyway, um, oh, Lord, who's calling me at 2.30 in the morning? We'll just have to wait. Anyway, um, so that one was really funny. And then I went downstairs. Alex was like, um, I'm trying to go to sleep, honey. And I go, okay. He was like, can you turn that off or watch that downstairs? I was like, okay. <laughs> so I went downstairs and I did bills and I did some other stuff. I ordered this watch that I wanted. And then I um, have, okay, so I have so many books. I used to talk about this on my booktube channel a lot, but I have all these books in the kitchen that people have sent me and then books that I'm reading and then like books that I have just like pulled out from like that I want to start to read. But I'm trying to finish all of these like seven books that I'm reading before I start new ones. Because then I just want to read one book at a time. And um, because I don't know how I got into seven books. Well, Booktube a thon last year, which is this readathon on Booktube, got me into all that. But anyway, if you want to I would love if you followed my Booktube channel. It's called Peter Likes Books. It's linked below. It's also linked on my channel. I'm posting on there daily again, so please go watch it. Um and it's very much like this. I mean, it's just me talking about books, but I ramble about all kinds of stuff on there. I mean, it's pretty much like the same thing as you see on my other channel. So anyway, um, but very down to earth, Peter, just talking about books. But anyway, so I'm trying to catch up on those books. So I like have those to the side and then I'm going to do a book haul. So I was putting like all of the books that people have sent me and the books that I bought like in one stack. And then I put books back on the bookshelf, so I got very organized. I was very proud of myself. So the kitchen is really clean now. And I was all excited about that. Then I went through my list of um, what I had for today. And I crossed everything off except for one thing, 
which is making, um, fi fixing my spreadsheet, spread shirt account on for merchandise because so many people want me to sell merchandise, so I've been trying to put that together. Did not get that to that today, so that's my only thing I have to really do tomorrow besides like make videos. Because I don't have any appointments, any meetings tomorrow, nothing. And I'm actually going to take a break writing tomorrow. So I'm not going to write tomorrow. I just need to rest my mind for 24 hours on my book. I'm at kind of a conflictual part of my book that I'm writing. So I want to just rest on it for 24 hours before I move forward. And um, I don't talk much about this on here because I don't really want a lot of it, a lot of it out. But I'm writing a book. <clears throat> about a teenager girl that kind of um, by accident becomes a YouTuber by accident and is really misunderstood and feels like society has these expectations on her. I'm being very vague about this. Has these expectations and these ideas of her based on stereotypes. And what's really interesting is that I had this idea for this book long before I ever got like really on YouTube. Like it was like right when I started my booktube channel. So like a year ago I started working this book. But like it's really interesting like as I've written this book like how much of what I was writing came true. Like as a viewer of YouTube like I could kind of see how this happens within the YouTube world and then it was proven to me. That there are a lot of people out there with their own agenda. That there are a lot of people out there, you know, that, like, don't really want to get to know you. I'm not talking about viewers. I'm talking about YouTubers to YouTubers. Um, that don't really want to get to know you. That have some kind of idea of who you are. But, like, how can you help them out in relation to that? It's, like... So, it's interesting, you know, that, like, the YouTubers that I've met that have been so nice and so helpful. And I have met quite a few of those. Um... But it's not really a book about a YouTuber. It's really about a girl going through a transitional time in her life. And, um... <clears throat> realizing that maybe she seeks validation from the world more than she thinks she does. And I thought that was a big animal and it was like a box on the side of the road. Um, so anyway... And I'm nearing the end of the book. It's a young adult book, but it's totally readable as an adult. And then the next book that I've already started working on is a book for... A, it, it's really... I don't want to say who it's for because I think anybody could read it. But it's, a, it's an adult book. And it's a, for women, really. And it's about a woman that... Um, so she's divorced... And her husband leaves her for not the young thing in town, but really the who's are that is well-educated and president of junior league. And she can't compete with her. She just, she, this woman is everything that women at that age think they should be, maybe, I think. Or society tells them that they should be, and she's not that. And, um... So she just kind of gives up. And then she has this major tragedy that happens. And, um, because her husband leaves her and she has to get a job. So she's working this job that she can't stand. And it's told day by day. So it is all told in 30 days. Um, and it's about changing your life and how you really realistically can change your life. And so it's very much a, um, self help book so to speak. I don't really like that word. Um, but like how to make your dreams come true or how to live your true life. I think how to live your true life. I like that. Um, but told within the, the con context of a fictional sense. And um, I'm really attached to this woman. She's very much like my mother. And, um, and it's really her working through her fear of getting to the other side of her fear. And, you know, like, once you get to the other side of your fear, then anything is possible. Because if you really think about it, whatever you want in your life, whatever you want to have, you know, I mean, of course, like, if you said to, to me, like, I want a husband that, you know, makes, you know, half a million dollars a year. Well, okay. I mean, you can't just go out and find him tomorrow. But, like, if you said to me, I want to be an actress, or I want to be financially stable, or I want to do this, I mean, 
the only thing I think that stops us from having those things, and I want to be a writer, I want to be an artist, I want to be an attorney, I think anything is possible. The only thing that stops us is fear um, from getting to the other side of that. I think once fear is behind us, like driving through a rainstorm and the black clouds are behind us and it's like bright, I think you really realize what a hold, I think we really, I've realized what a hold fear has on me, if that makes sense, you know? Um, it's only when I realize that I could lose everything that I have, I could lose everybody that I have, and I'm still gonna be okay, because I've lost a lot in my life, and I'm still okay, and I have an amazing life. It's only when you realize that and you push through the fear that you realize anything is possible, you know? What do you have to lose? And um, so that's kind of her journey, is getting to that point. And some very strange things happened to her along the way. It's a semi-road trip, kind of. The first third of it is a road trip, and um, that's where I'm at with it right now. But anyway, and it takes place in Miami, so, but she's from Indiana, so. I don't know, maybe I'm writing my story with it a little bit. I do feel like that. I think I'm so connected to her because a lot of it is, yeah, it reminds, she reminds me of my mom in some ways, but she is very much like me, I think, you know? And just kind of like at a point where I was maybe a year or two ago where I was kind of lost, like what's my next move? And if you just kind of sit, I'm a believer in this, and you don't go against the grain and you allow yourself to float, the world will, the universe will kind of push you in the direction you're supposed to go. Like I really believe that, right? Like once you stop resisting and you move through the fear, the universe will tell you where you're supposed to go. So, like, a lot of times, you know, with, like, people, they'll say to me, like, well, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with my life. Okay, well, maybe you're not supposed to be doing anything with your life right now. Maybe you're just supposed to be existing, you know? Enjoy a good dinner, you know, take a walk, watch a good movie, read a good book, and just exist for a while. And before you know it, the universe will tell you where you're supposed to be. I, I truly, truly believe that. Um... You know, I don't resist a lot anymore. I kind of just float where I'm supposed to go, you know, like, and this is just going to sound so totally stupid and random, but like, like tonight I was like in a great mood, but I was very tired because I slept too long yesterday. And so I, um, was on my way home and Tanya texted me and she was like, do you want to go to Meyer? And I was like, almost texted her to say, no, I'm going to go home. I'm going to lay down for an hour because I have two hours left in my audiobook. I bought four new Audible books today because I had six credits, so I used four of them. Oh, my God. Sylvain Nouvelle. Oh! His book last year, I cannot remember what it is called, but it had the hand on the front of it. Oh, my God. That book was fantastic. And it, I just, he has, the second one just came out. I am so excited. So, I bought it. So, I've got to finish my book that I'm listening to now so I can start that one. I'm so excited. Sylvain Nouvelle, N-E-U-V-E-L, and he is sexy as all get out. He is like long hair, like French Canadian. He is so good looking. And um, but he's married and has kids. But that even makes him kind of sexier, I think. But anyway, I can't remember what the, the book was called. It's blue on the front of it. It was fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. And um a lot of people didn't like it, but I loved it. I mean, it was probably one of the top five books I read last year. So anyway, the second one just came out, and I'm excited about that. And then I bought, um, I don't know what other books I bought. But anyway, so yeah. Oh, this is what I was saying. So anyway, I was going to go home and take a nap, and then get up and listen to my audio book. But Tony was like, do you want to go to Meyer?" And I was like... I wanted to see Tanya and I wanted to hang out, but I was so tired, so I just like was like push through, just go, right? So I went and picked her up and we went to Meyer and we walked around and I got those candles and although those candles seem like a small thing, I'm kind of at this point in my life right now, like and when I say this, this is not because I'm having money problems, because I'm not, but I'm just trying not to spend money on shit that I don't need, okay? Like I have like in the last ten years, like I used like when we used to go to Meyer you know, like, Tanya's really good for going to Meyer and having four things that she needs and then end up buying, like, a cute shirt, a book, 
you know, a plant and a candle, like she doesn't need, and then she spent another 60 bucks or 100 bucks on something, right? Like, I used to be like that, too, and I'm trying not to be like that. I'm trying to, like, really live, like, by minimalism to some degree. Not, like, I'm not on the whole full, full course of that, but I'm trying to, like, live on less. Like, if I don't need stuff, I don't need it, right? That way, then, when I do treat myself to something smaller, it means more to me. And I was so excited about those candles. I, like, went through all of them tonight, and I, like, smelled every single one of them. Oh, by the way, this is the one thing I was going to say. If anybody knows, when my mother passed away, she had a candle in her kitchen. And I swear it was called Cabernet, like the red wine. It may have been Merlot, but I'm almost positive it was Cabernet. I cannot find this candle anywhere, but it smelled so good. It literally smelled like a bottle of red wine. Now, I may be an alcoholic in recovery, but I love the smell of red wine. And this candle smelled so fantastic. It literally smelled like you know, being in London in the winter and, like, sitting in some loungy bar and, like, people, like, drinking, like, you know, port or red wine late at night. You know, it's 2 o'clock in the morning, candles are lit, and all these romantic conversations are going across, and it's kind of snowing lightly outside, and you can't wait to just get back to your hotel room. And, you know what I mean? Like, okay, that's what this candle smelled like. I want this candle. And it was like a cheap candle that you got like at Target or something. And it was called Cabernet or Merlot. If anybody knows where to get that candle, let me know. I have Googled it. I can't find it. I Googled it and then I would like find it. And then they would say they were like out of it. And I think it was Merlot, not Cabernet. But anyway, so somebody please see if you know where to find that. And, um, because I want that candle. But anyway, um... So then we went to Meyer, and I was like thinking to myself when I was going through this, I had such a good time. I was so excited. And I spent like $11 on those. And I was like, this will bring me so much joy for the next month. You know, I mean, this is so much fun. And I deserve to treat myself to something a little fun that's not too expensive. That will make me happy in the long run. And I wouldn't have done that had I not gone with Tanya. And then we left and we got into such an amazing conversation in the car. I mean, just about like how much like our friendship has changed in the last year and just like who we are. And we were talking about the things that have happened in our lives, the good and the bad. But we were talking really about like the bad, sad tragedies of our lives and how they had really made us who we are today. And it just was such a profound conversation to have between two friends late at night. And just, I love her so much, you know, and she's just so, she's just... She's my heartstone, you know? And I wouldn't have had that conversation had I just gone home and gone to bed. And so, like, I allow the universe to direct me where I'm supposed to go. And that's just a small example of it. You know, like, a lot of times, like, when people ask me things to do things, like, I get asked, you know, like, oh, will you do this? Or will you do this for me? Or, hey, would you like this opportunity? Like, I get approached a lot about YouTube stuff, like sponsorships. I get approached by, I mean, I don't do very many sponsorships and I get approached all the time. I just got approached for quite a bit of money that they wanted me to review a gay men's app called Grizzly that was for hairy bared men to, um, it was a hookup so that they could have sex with each other. They wanted me to do that on this vlogging channel. I was like, and it was quite a bit of money. And I was like, they wanted me to do like a review of it at the beginning of the video. I was like, um, I'm not real comfortable with that as a made, married gay man that does not love those apps anyway. I mean, if I was single, it's, it is what it is. But I, like, I'm such a scaredy cat. Like, I think if I got divorced or I was single again, I still don't think I'd be on those apps. Like, I don't know. Like, I don't think I'd ever meet anybody again. You know? Because that's what everybody does now. They get on Grinder and all that stuff, and they meet people. I'm scared of that stuff. I mean, I really am. Like, I'm kind of a scaredy cat about that stuff. I wouldn't hook up with somebody that I met on an app and just go to their house or have them come to mine. I'm old school about that kind of stuff. Like, I'm not saying I'm old school about a one-night stand. I'd love to let you guys think that I am, but I'm not. I mean, I would have a one-night stand with somebody that I thought was attractive. But maybe a piece of pizza and, hey, let's some flirting across the table first, I mean, you know, or in the bar, a dance or something, you know, I mean, like, I'm not about all that, like, I was kind of offended that they reached out to me, and then, like, I didn't even respond, and they sent me three consecutive emails, 
asking me why I wasn't responding to them. And I was like, because I'm a married man is what I wanted to say. And I, I was so afraid to say it because I knew if I did, they'd probably say, well, if you, no matter how you work it out on your channel, you know, you can still, will still uh, support you doing that. I thought, and isn't that how we look at things in society, you know, that we don't really care that you're a married gay man. We just want you to, you know, well, I do care. And I think that that's bad. And I think it's tacky. So anyway, and they're like, oh, we're an app for like meeting friends. <laughs> no, girl, you're an app for hookups. That's what you are. Just own what you are. I don't have a problem with people having a hookup sites, but own what it is. And it's not going to be on my channel. I told Alex, Alex is like, I think you should have taken the money and done it. <laughs> But I get asked to do a lot of stuff, and I can tell you right away, right from my gut, I'm like, this is right or this is wrong. Um, I got approached, like this is something that I do get excited about. I'm getting, I'm starting to get a, a, approached by a lot of people on BookTube, like publishers and things like that. I got approached by the, like the P, personal PR agent of a pretty big writer saying that because of my Chuck Palahniuk, um, Pol Poloniac, Poloniac, um, review of Fight Club, that they loved my style, and that the author himself had seen my videos, and everybody in the office had seen my videos, and they wanted me to do a review of his upcoming book and his old book. I was so excited, because this book has been made into a movie, and I love this movie. And I'm not, I mean, listen, I'm not getting paid to do this review. They just reached out to me and asked me if I would do it. And I was like, hell yes. I'm honored to be asked to do that. Um, and then I'm also honored when a lot of, like, unknown authors reach out to me. This guy just the other day just sent me his book. And, you know, that's like... And he sent me a message on Twitter, I think a direct message. And he was like... Um, I know that, and he, and he, you know, he acknowledged, he's like, I know that my, what I write is not typically what you like to read, but you know, I'm going to send you a copy anyway. And if you like it, please read it and review it. If you don't, could you please give it to somebody else? Maybe they'll review it. And I thought that is so cool that he said it that way. You know, like that is such so like professional and lighthearted. I loved it, but I don't know. Like, so it's interesting to me because like when people reach out to me and not just with that, but like in town too, like I get asked to do a lot of charity stuff nothing to do with YouTube, trust me. I mean, they're not asking me because I'm a YouTuber. They're asking me because of, like, all of my past history of working with teenagers and all that kind of stuff. Like, it's interesting to me because, like, I can feel it in my gut, like, instantly. Like, I should do this or no, I shouldn't. Do you guys feel that way about things? Like, do you have that gut feeling, like, the universe is telling you? I mean, I don't know. I've always thought it was my sixth sense, but I think it also is, like, kind of the universe telling you, do this, don't do that, you know? I don't know. But it's exciting to wonder, like, what's the universe going to tell me I'm supposed to be doing tomorrow? You know, like, I like that idea. Like, you know, when I think about where my life was, you know, I was just thinking about this today that, well, I was talking about this in my live You Now stream, that um, May 11th will be one year since I've been on BookTube permanently. Like, I mean, since I've really started posting daily was May 11th last year. My main channel I started, like, in September or August. So, like, it hasn't even been a year yet that I've been on there, you know? And I'm so excited about all the things I've done. And my life has changed. I mean, I can't even believe, like, a year ago, I wasn't even doing this, right? And now, look, my life is, like, literally 80% about YouTube. And I love it. I love it so much. Somebody said to me the other day in a comment, they're like, does he even work anymore? Or Yes, girl, I just still work. And they're like, she just make videos all day long. I make so many videos because I love to make videos. I'm just so passionate about it. I love talking to you guys. I love interacting with you guys. I sat in my driveway tonight and went through about every snap I had for the last two days because I've been so lazy about it. I love all of it, you know? And so I make time for it. You make time for those things that you love. And so I'm really excited because I don't know where I'll be six months from now. I don't know, you know, where the universe will have taken me with all this YouTube stuff. But I think it's exciting, and I think it's super exciting to be open to that and um, to see what's going to come next, don't you? But I like looking at the world that way, you know? So, anyway. Well, I'm going to get off here now, and I'm going to try to finish my audiobook so that I can start my new one tomorrow. I'm so excited. Go buy the Sylvain Nouvelle book. 
N-E-U-V-E-L or V-A-L, I can't remember, but it came out last year. I cannot remember what that book is called. It was so good, though. Anyway, and it has a hand on the front of it, big hand. I love you guys so much. A triangle, I think, and a hand. Very Illuminati looking. I love you guys, and I will see you tomorrow. Happy Earth Day.